In this short video, we're going to take a look at a new measurement called cross-correlation EVM. So what's happening in the industry, modulation bandwidths are getting wider. That's causing the signals to be uh, closer to the noise floor. Also, constellation diagrams are getting denser. We now have uh, modulation orders up to 4,096 points, even higher. That creates really dense constellation points also causes a high peak to average ratios. And to avoid clipping, we have to run the amplifiers, we have to back them off a little bit. That's also pushing the signal closer to the noise floor. That's a problem, and we'd like to be able to really measure the EVM under these uh, much more challenging conditions. So the cross-correlation EVM measurement effectively removes the noise contribution from the analyzer, letting us see the true performance of our device under test. In this case, we're gonna be looking at one of our uh, signal generators here, the VXG, which is our flagship vector microwave signal generator. And with normal EVM measurements, we really can't determine because the equipment's getting so good what the true performance is of the source, it's being limited by the analyzer. But if we can remove the noise contribution from the analyzer, we'll really be able to see what the VXG can do. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna make measurements with the UXR, the UXA, and the VXT. We have a couple of our flagship products. The first one here, the UXR, we have two versions of that. The first one is 128 giga sample per second scope. The other one over here is a 256 giga sample per second scope. Now you might wonder, well, which one of those is gonna give me the best measurement? So we, put, we got them both here, we're gonna make those measurements so you can see firsthand which one does better. We'll also compare that to the UXA, and then as I mentioned, the VXT. All right, so let's take a look at our measurement setup for the first uh, measurement that we're gonna make here. We have the VXG, our flagship microwave vector source. We're gonna use an 802.11BE signal uh, wireless LAN, which is a very popular communications format right now. We're going to make this measurement at 7 gigahertz and an amplitude of minus 10. I'm kind of pointing at channel 2, but really doing this on channel 1 here. Both channels are the same. So I have the signal coming out of channel 1, and it's going into a splitter, high-quality splitter. We're splitting that into two paths, and we have uh, the signal going into the scope. What you see on the scope now, I have both uh, channels enabled. I have the constellation diagram and spectrum and EVM results for channel one, also the same for channel two. And you can see that uh, the, the individual EVM of each channel is around minus 42 dB. On the far right lower hand corner, we have the cross correlation EVM, and you can see we're measuring right around minus, a uh, little bit better than minus 53 dB. So that's a significant improvement after we're able to remove all of the noise contributions from the UXR. Now remember this was done on the 128 giga sample per second scope. Next we're going to look at the 256 giga sample per second scope and see how that looks. All right, so we have the source now connected to the 256 giga sample per second UXR and the cross correlation EVM results are actually the same as 128 giga sample per second scope. The reason for this is that we're removing all of the noise from the uh, receiver, contrib the cont contributions from the receiver, and uh, we would expect to get essentially the same performance with the cross correlation EVM. The individual EVMs you would expect on the 256 giga sample per second scope to be a little bit better. Here they're again essentially the same and probably uh, we, we have a little bit of a different setup with some additional adapters and connectors could be affecting that. And we also might have a little bit unit to unit variation. So generally an individual EVM measurement would, should be a little bit higher with the higher sample rate scope but the cross correlation, again, comparable with these two. So that's maybe an unexpected result uh, if you were just uh, thinking about that for the first time. All right, we're gonna make the measurement on the uh, UXA now. I, I, so I have the VXG uh, with a splitter, two cables to the two UXAs. I'm using the X apps to make this measurement instead of VSA because it's convenient and handy here. However, you could use VSA. It's the same algorithms. You'll get the exact same results. So what do the results tell us? Well, we see the constellation there. That's the same, that looks good. We have the single channel EVM here at the top and we're measuring right around minus 48, minus 49 dB. So we, we're measuring a little bit better than we did with the UXR in a single channel measurement. At the bottom, we see the cross correlation EVM and we're getting exactly the same result, minus 53 
dB. And that's what we'd expect um, because we've removed all the noise from the measurement. Now one thing you can do to improve the cross-correlation EVM a little bit is to make sure you're more noise dominated in the receiver. Normally with a single channel EVM measurement, you're trying to find the best compromise between noise and distortion by adjusting that front end attenuator. That's how we have the analyzer set right now. But if we increase the attenuation from 4 dB to 10 dB, we're gonna be more noise dominated. The idea here is to eliminate any distortion components as much as possible. So we've increased the attenuation 10 dB. That made our single channel EVM degrade slightly from minus 49 down to minus 45. But you'll notice the cross correlation EVM also improved. Now we're down to around minus 55 dB. We also could have done this on the UXR, but I just wanted to point that out here on the UXA. So the UXA giving us a little bit better single channel EVM, but the cross correlation essentially the same compared to the UXR. Now let's take a look at the VXT. What we have is a chassis actually with two VXTs installed. And in this demo, we're gonna use the internal source to drive both channels of the VXT analyzers. We're not gonna use the VXG. The reason we're doing that is to show off how good the cross correlation technique works. And what we find actually is that the VXT source is very, very good. It's almost as good as the VXG. It's about one dB worse or so. Let's take a look at the results here. So if we look at the single channel EVM, we're measuring right around minus 44 dB. This is artificially a little bit um, higher than it should be. We should be measuring right around minus 48. The reason for this is we need to do an alignment that takes about 20 minutes to do, and we don't want to take time to do it uh, in this video. However, if we, so we would get minus 48 if we did that. Uh, now we'll look at the cross correlation EVM and we're measuring right around minus 52 dB, which is about one dB worse than we saw with the UXR and the UXA using the VXG. So the VXT source performance is almost as good as the VXG. All right, in summary, we looked at three of our flagship products and measured the EVM using the cross-correlation technique. We got about minus 53 dB using the VXG. So the VXG actually is a great, great source with uh, phenomenal EVM performance. And we're now able to really measure that with the cross-correlation technique using the UXR, using the UXA, and also using the VXT. So for those of you that might be a little bit newer to the company, you might wonder, well, why would I choose a UXR over the UXA versus the VXT? So we'll cover that here quickly. So the UXR obviously is a scope, it's a time domain machine that we can use for, with uh, vector capability with the VSA, so that's great. You can use it for lots of other time domain measurements, but it's not a fully swept tuned kind of instrument. This is a digitizer, and so you don't get all of the things you get with a very flexible, general purpose, swept tuned analyzer like the UXA. So this is great for doing demodulation performance. And in fact, we get almost the same performance between the UXR and the UXA when we do a single channel EVM measurement. This is slightly better. You all, with the swept tuned capability, you also can do all of the out of band measurements like spurious uh, measurements is one classic example. And then we have the VXT. This is a much smaller compact form factor. You can put multiple channels in a chassis. You get both a source and analyzer with each VXT. However, the VXT is a banded solution. It doesn't have the full frequency range. The analyzer here isn't swept tuned, uh, but this might be great. We've sold a lot of these into manufacturing environments. So there's uh, pros and cons with each solution. Depending upon what your customer is doing, one of these will make a better fit. All right, for the AEs, a couple of quick tips for how we set this up to get the uh, best performance out of the system. On the source, we did a couple of things. So the default uh, runtime scaling is usually around 70%. We bumped that up to 90%. That's gonna improve the EVM just a little bit. And then we went into the hardware optimization and we set the override signal to noise ratio setting to zero dB. So we're using the maximum amount of DAC headroom and then we also set the optimization mode to three. 
So those things uh, are all contributing to getting us a little bit better uh, EVM performance on the source. And then on the analyzer, uh, the key thing was just really getting the uh, attenuator set properly uh, for the single channel uh, EVM measurement, you're kind of optimizing between distortion and noise. And for the cross-correlation technique, you want to drive the analyzer um, a little less hard so there's uh, no distortion component. So that means adding in a little extra attenuation than you would normally. All right, special thanks to a few people for helping make this video become a reality. We have Goshan, one of our key R&D members. Uh, he's one of the key guys behind the, the cross-correlation EVM. Sam Casano-san's been a big help. And of course, uh, I borrowed some equipment from Mike Milheim over here to get all of this put together so you could see the EVM results across some of our key platforms. Thanks for watching.